Um, <coughs> good morning again. I will uh, present this uh, joint paper. Uh, you see the names of the, all the contributors that I would like to thank you right now, even if only Filippo will be here. He's here. Uh, Andrea, Lisa Marie, and Lorna, they couldn't make it from Britain, and Paolo Di Mattia, which is our geologist, uh, also. Uh, because he was very busy with uh, some coring in central Sicily. He couldn't make it uh, to come uh, to the, the conference. But their contribution is very, very important in order to define the uh, complete picture for what is the site of Casa Bastione. Um, Casa Bastione is located in the central part of Sicily. Uh, <coughs> is place on a terrace just at the foot of a, a sharp uh, cliff limiting to the south the Paleo Lake uh, Lago Stelo. Uh, Claudia later on will talk about more on this, uh, which has been drawn in the, in the 30s, uh, but which forms a very important uh, uh, feature. The site has been discovered for the first time by Luigi Bernabobrea, while in the late 40s it was uh, working at the Real Mese uh, Necropolis excavation uh, with his uh, helps, uh, with uh, um, uh, workers who went around the area and he spotted this uh, uh, cliff with a series of graves, cuts, rock cut graves and he just mentioned that it was not possible uh, uh, to, to reach uh, because the, you know, uh, the, the, the cliff was too steep. Uh, the site has been rediscovered in the year 2000 thanks to a small survey project financed by the municipality of Villa Rosa. Uh, we will be working on, a, on, on, on this terrace and uh, collecting a lot of uh, material that you see here, the chronology, uh, going from the late Neolithic, going through the Copper Age and uh, Early Bronze Age. The site has been abandoned and reoccupied during the uh, uh, late antique, early medieval period. Again, about this, uh, uh, Francesca Rosbuzzi will present a poster in the medieval section uh, next Saturday, where we will present some of the data also from Casa Bastione. Then the site uh, is being uh, uh, placed by the municipality of Villa Rosa within a project financed by DC. Uh, we were able to get some money in order to acquire the land to the municipality own ownings and uh, we had the first archaeological uh, excavation in here 2007. Uh, so far we had eight campaigns of archaeological excavation uh, concentrated uh, mainly next one in the uh, late Copper Age, Early Bronze Age levels. Uh, but uh, this January, last January, we had the chance uh, uh, to make a core in the right middle of the site uh, we had the, the opportunity to verify that uh, the full deposit is uh, take about five meters before the, the bedrock and it's all archaeological. So we hope that in the future we will can have uh, some test pits uh, in uh, other parts of the area when the late Copper Age, Early Bronze Age uh, structures are not present in order to, to explore and to investigate the older levels. Uh, this is just a picture of what is the landscape. This area was for a long time almost unknown from in terms of archaeology. Uh, only Montaltesina was known again because uh, the uh, Luigi Benabobrea worked in the area. Uh, this situation completely changed after 2004, after the year 2000 when uh, the small survey project was run and then more or less constantly every year we had uh, small parts of the survey go going around the town, this, the, the, the territory. And this is <coughs> what you have at the moment, all the names reported on the photos are archaeological sites, which goes from prehistory down to the uh, medieval period. Just to give you some idea of the archaeology of this area, Real Mese, of course, uh, the, the main uh, site will be excavated by Luigi Bernabobrea in the late 40s, but also Monte Giulfo, which is a Greek site, a uh, Greek archaic site. Um, Contrada Gaspa is a, is, a, is a Roman necropolis dating to the 4th century AD, 
and of course then uh, Canalotto is, is a very huge uh, rock cut villages dating from the early Roman period down to the uh, medieval period. Prossima. Uh, very, very sh shortly, what is the um, uh, geological, geomorphological context of Case Bastione? Case Bastione is placed on the very north part of the Catonisetta Basin uh, in, a, in a territory which is marked uh, by Terra Vecchia for, uh, from uh, conglomerates dating to the Tortonian period and uh, to the evaporit uh, mixed with the evaporitic series dating to the Messina. Uh, the evaporitic series with the uh, presence in uh, surface of uh, important uh, resources like uh, uh, rock salt, sulfur, chalk um, that are all present in the area. Uh, next one. As I said, uh, we started the first excavation in 2007, uh, up to a few weeks ago. <laughs> and uh, I'm not going into much in details in the archaeology of Casa Bastione. We published a few papers, the last one, the more important one on Origini, a few years ago, and then others preliminary notes on the Tiziario on the Historia Uh But I won't concentrate here on what are the analytical aspects of the, uh, of, the of our project run together with Filippo, uh, and especially dedicating my, my, my attention to the uh, geomorphological and geophysical uh, analysis we have uh, the opportunity to run in the site leading to Claudia. Later on, the, uh, the, all the bioarchaeological aspects uh, of uh, the site. Next one. Uh, we, in the, the first campaign, we were able to get uh, 21 photocarbon dates that has been analyzed also through the aid of uh, the Bayesian chronology analysis. Uh, with, uh, through the Bayesian analysis, we can uh, divide the, uh, um, the 21 dates in three clusters of dates that correspond to a series of structures found. The first one, root dating from the 2600 to 2300 is dating to the early late copper age, area alpha inferiore. Next one. Then is the uh, uh, first group of dates the referring to Hut 1, uh, which is early, the, the first part of early Bronze Age, dating from 2200 until 1900, Cal BC. The third one is, that is uh, related to Hut 2 and 3, that are two other structures dating to the middle late part of the early Bronze Age, between the 1900 and 1700. At Case Bastione is missing the f what has been called the fourth phases of the uh, subdivision of the Lucio uh, long uh, period. Um, next one, just just to give you an idea, what is uh, the early Bronze Age? At one, we are the, some of the vessels we found. Um, uh, I want to show this picture only to quote the mention the presence of large quantities of dough with are preserving uh, perfectly well all the imprints of reeds and poles. Claudia uh, tomorrow will uh, present a paper, a joint paper with other specialists on, on the team, and so he, she will analyze more in detail these aspects. Um, as for the late copper age, we were able to expose this uh, context from a bipolar surface with postals and uh, a series of uh, shallow pits all lined in, in uh, clay. Uh, we were able to analyze part of the material culture, particularly thanks to Robert Tycott, we had the opportunity to analyze all the obsidian coming from the site and 95% uh, of this from this, but not only from this context, comes from Lipari, it was expected, and only a very small quantity, 5% coming from uh, Contraleria. Uh, the main feature is this uh, strange feature, we call this a furnace at the beginning. We were almost convinced that that was related to archaeometallurgical activities. Also because, next one, we found a series of objects in the cl close proximity that looks like uh, probably objects involving the 
metal production, so a mold, a series of possible um, uh, crucibles, but also because uh, we found uh, certain uh, similarities with uh, uh, metallurgical furnaces around the, the, the Mediterranean, especially in the Iberian Peninsula, Zambuyal uh, and uh, uh, sites in the central south of Spain. Uh, since 2013, Andrea Dolfini joined the project. He took samples from the pits and sent to analyze to Lorna Aguilano at the Brunel University of London. And of course, there was no metallurgy at all. This was the big surprise for us and big <laughs> disappointment. Uh, all the samples taken from the, um, from the pits, we have at least three or four pits involved in the same area, uh, didn't give any presence of metal, of slags or whatever. Uh, the chemical and mineralogical composition was quite uh, similar to many others where, you know, producing a lot of, uh, lot of iron oxide, which is naturally present in the soil and in the clay. Uh, but despite this, uh, we have uh, also sent other samples to analyze, particularly two from the layers just in front of the so-called furnaces, with that at the moment are still under studies just to understand what they're being used. Uh, but these two samples have uh, returned a very interesting uh, chemical signature, a lot of titanium, aluminium. So we started to wonder what are this stuff, and we found that this could be probably uh, samples taken from the, the polymetallic modules. that are geological formation typical of the flish formation, created on the seabed, and then emerged with the you know, constitution of the flish. Uh, these are kind of uh, balls of metal containing, containing uh, manganese, a little quantity of copper or, uh, or an iron oxide, and in the smaller quantities, a lot of other type of metals. Uh, the important thing that this is not something that comes from the site or from the area. It has to be taken there because the closest source of this material comes from at least 15 kilometers. So this analysis, despite the fact that they denied, at least for the moment, the possibility to have uh, archaeometallurgy on, on, on Casa Bastione, has opened a new perspe perspective analyzing the context of the polymetallic nodules. And the next one, if we look at the raw material presence in the area, we can realize this is something that we are working with Paolo Di Mattia, our geologist. Uh, Casa Bastione is the red circle in the middle, and if you see the uh, presence of sulfur very close, the yellow squares, but also rock salt. So if you consider that uh, the main raw materials present in the area, which goes from uh, iron uh, oxide, uh, uh, basalt, is the two places that have this geological anomaly, uh, uh, is within 10 kilometers, so it's basically one day walk. It's possible to reach all these um, raw materials that they take taken back to the site. This could be part of the explanation for the importance for the long time uh, durability of the, of the site. In always in 2013, uh, thanks to the collaboration with Andrea Dolfini and Newcastle University. We had the chance to do a geophysical prospection, a paleomagnetic prospection of the site, which on the uh, left figure you see the, the results with a series of anomalies, uh, well above the 40% nanotesla, which is the units. Okay, yeah. I'm competing. Two minutes. <laughs> Um, and uh, uh, we started in 2014 to excavate the first one, which is this one here in, on the southern part. Next one. And we exposed what we uh, consider a very unique structure. We call this AT5. It's a very large structure. We are not sure yet if this is a proper uh, hut or something else. Uh, so far, we expose uh, almost 40% of the structures, which is, should be long about 16 meters and open uh, large about uh, between 6 and 8 meters. Um, 
the space, the internal space is divided in two parts, in the external corridor and the central part. In the external corridor we have a clay bench going around the perimeter wall, a small uh, lithic cyst in the center probably used as a fireplace, next one. Uh, the most important thing that uh, we found that the division between uh, the, the corridor external and the central part uh, is a uh, filled uh, is, is uh, marked by series of posts, and we actually found the actual post uh, inside, still, still uh, preserved. And again, Claudia is uh, analyzing and will present some of the preliminary results on this, and also a series of other pits. You see here some example. There's a series of pits around here. Another, the large one is this one. You see here, which has been uh, closed with a very complex uh, ritual. Uh, voluntary broken shards plucked on, on, on the floor. Stones, then again shards, the same shirt, the same vessel broken, put on top of the uh, stone of pile, a pile of stone, and then a fire was put on. Uh, we don't know yet what is the, 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 the purpose of this, but uh, we think that, of course, the samples have been taken at the moment are analyzed in, in England. Uh, we think, we, said, we hope that the, the evidence will uh, provide the information about the agricultural transformation of, uh, of products. Uh, we have a lot of evidence for cheese making, uh, strainers, clay spoons. Uh, we think that all this central part was in some way dedicated to the transformation of agriculture or even to the pastoral activity uh, products. But this is our you know, uh, hypothesis and of course we need uh, more analysis uh, on the go. Uh, the last slide, just to give you um, a hint of what has been the result of this uh, 2018 uh, campaign. Uh, we were opening the uh, area trying to uh, trace the northern side at five. Uh, we knew from a previous campaign that we were going through a series of levels dating to the um, early early Bronze Age. What well, we were, were not expecting that uh, in the opening of this new trend of new, new squares uh, just north of at five, the early Bronze Age levels were characterized by the presence of a series of pits. The, the, the one on, on the lower part is about two meters long, is about uh, 60, 80 centimeters long. And within the filling of the pits, next one, we found uh, uh, ceramic waste, or we call it in Italian a marcotti, and uh, uh, slugs. That, uh, thanks to the presence of Marco Pitone and uh, <coughs> the portable XRF, have been analyzed and they are clay uh, slugs. So we think, of course, we need more analysis, more, uh, more, uh, more, uh, more work on this, but we think that this could be firing pit used to produce uh, early Bronze Age uh, vessels. Uh, I think this is all for the moment, uh, and uh, of course, uh, I, I, of course, we will continue, and uh, uh, thank you very much for that.